Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Gators. Welcome, welcome to Orlando. Man, that's really, that's really weak in the back. <laughs> welcome to Orlando. <laughs> Go, Gators. Go Gators. There we go. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Mitchell, the Vice President of University Advancement. Uh, it's a pleasure to have all of you here with us this evening to celebrate Golden Gators. This morning, we welcomed 17 new National Foundation board members. And if you would please, if you are a new Foundation board member attending, could you please stand and I would ask all of us to give them a very warm Gator welcome, please. Thanks so much. I want to recognize a person at table 21. Is, where's 21 at? Oh, back over here. This guy is smart. He is charismatic. He is handsome. And he is an extraordinary gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please stand? Tom Mitchell. <laughs> Tom. I checked in this morning. They said, uh, yeah, Tom, you're already checked in. There's another Tom. <laughs> I said, oh, really? And uh, Tom's daughter is a sophomore at the University of Florida. And she's having a great experience. So Tom, we're thrilled that you're with us tonight. Thanks so much. I love that name. It's a great name. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get our program started. Uh, we thought we, you might enjoy hearing from one of our outstanding musical theater students. In fact, she is leaving bright and early tomorrow morning to head to New York to meet with agents. Please sit back and enjoy a phenomenal, phenomenal Gator who's going to do great things on Broadway. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our very own Lauren Robinson. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, I make feels lost with no direction My faith is shaking But I, I gotta keep trying Gotta keep my head held high It's always gonna be another mountain I'm always gonna wanna make it move It's always gonna be an uphill battle Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose It ain't about how fast I get there It ain't about what's waiting on the other side It's the cloud Struggles I'm facing The chances I'm taking Sometimes might knock me down but no, I'm not breaking. We may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm gonna remember most now. Just gotta keep going and I gotta be strong and just keep pushing.
and gentlemen, she's going to New York. Let's give her a great send-off. Go Gators! Woo! You're fabulous. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Oh my gosh. She asked me to sing backup. I did back behind the curtain. <laughs> Uh, so she's on her way, and it's, it's always great. Uh, Lauren sang for us at our um, To Become the Best tour when she was a freshman. So she has sung with us at Gator outings um, all over the country. And so this is one of her last outings that she is going to do for us before she goes to uh, New York. And so we're very, very, very uh, happy for her. Again, we're thrilled to be here in Orlando. It is, in fact, the perfect city for the first Golden Gators event outside of Gainesville. And many of you probably already know that Orlando is home for 35,000 Gators. 35,000 Gators, yeah, a round of applause. And even more impressive, listen to this number, over the years, Orlando Gators, businesses and others, have contributed and invested $331 million in the University of Florida. This is indeed Gator country here in Orlando. Many of you also know, and we're very proud of this, that the University of Florida moved into the top 10. We knew that we were already there. Others just recognized it here recently in September. But boy, what an accomplishment to be among the very, very best public universities in the country. Number nine, and just to give you some significance, there are over 1,600 public universities in the country. And when you add the privates and the publics together, it's over 4,000. Your university, the University of Florida, is number nine in the country, among the very best. A round of applause. And I see a number of our Board of Trustee members here tonight. Uh, President Fox will probably introduce them, but they are not letting any grass grow under their feet. Uh, I continue to now hear that they aspire to be among the top five now. So we have some, some work to do. So uh, special thanks to all of you. Um, you probably heard today that we're very close to halfway of our $3 billion fundraising campaign. Today we reported, I believe, $1.46 billion have been committed to the University of Florida. Yeah, yeah. So let's get started with our program. The gentleman I'm about to introduce really needs no introduction. In fact, he is the driving, and let me emphasize, driving force on our campus. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium our president, Kent Fox. Looking forward to spending the next two hours giving rides to students on this very first day of classes. Come follow me. What's your name? Hey, Chris. Hello. Have a break. Where are you going? Uh, Rights Union. Let's go. Anybody want to ride to Rights Union? Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Chris. Yeah, welcome. Glad you're here. Come in, Will. Want to ride the Century Tower? Up in, up in. Right here, next to me. Do you mind if we tape it every week? And if you need to stop anywhere, just come in. Yeah, do you want to get off here? I think I'm going to be an Uber driver. What do you think? Presidential Uber. Half price. It is good to be here. Let me check off my Uber hat. I, I did want to acknowledge uh, the Board of Trustee members that are here with us. Uh, we had an event where we were talking to some of the spectacular students from Orlando just a few minutes ago. And uh, at that event, one of our Board of Trustees members, as well as some of the others that are here, spoke. Rael Patel is here. Also at my table here is Anita Zucker and Bill Hevner. Thank you three for being on our board. Well, more than any other city in our nation, Orlando, indeed, is the place where dreams come true. 
And tonight, we are celebrating the individuals who have made dreams come true for our beloved University of Florida. This year's winners of the Golden Gator Awards have helped us achieve our dreams of exceptional education and impact through our profound research and athletic and academic excellence. And because of these individuals that we're honoring, we have had the privilege of helping students, scientists, and scholars indeed achieve their dreams and benefit our planet. Walt Disney once said, quote, you can design and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. And tonight, we're gonna to meet a few of those people. Before, though, we get there, I do want to introduce a very special guest and his wife. I'm thrilled that we have with us this evening a Gator who is one of the world's most preeminent university presidents. His name is Dr. Peretz Levy, and he's the president of the Technion, the Israel Institute of Technology, a personal friend of mine. And he received his doctorate degree from the University of Florida in 1974. And yesterday we had the honor of listening to him talk about the Technion and the impact that, that university has had in transforming the economy of Israel, and also the honor of having the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and myself present our Distinguished Alumnus Award to Peretz Levy. So Peretz and Lena, could you both stand please? We'd like to acknowledge you. And now I have the privilege of making a special announcement. When we gathered for the Golden Gators just last year, we honored two individuals, John and Beverly Thompson, and we honored them with the Lifetime Philanthropy Award. Now I am thrilled tonight to have John and Beverly back again and to announce that they have made an extraordinary gift. John and Beverly's leadership, their leadership level gift is gonna position the University of Florida as an international leader in Earth System Studies. It'll unite scholars and scientists around the campus in pursuing leading edge research, but also in bringing it to other educational institutions, to policymakers around the nation and the world, and indeed to media across the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to announce that the Thompsons have made a gift commitment of $10 million. John and Beverly, would you stand please? John and Beverly, from the bottom of all of our hearts in the Gator Nation, thank you for your belief in the importance of education and scholarship and the difference that it makes on our planet. Now at this point, I'd also like to invite Beth McCaig, the chair of the foundation board, to join me. Beth, could you please come forward and say a few words? Thank you, Uber driver. <laughs> uh, and thank you, John and Beverly for the extraordinary gift that you are making. I'm honored to be among a group that is so forward-thinking and so committed, not only to the future of our beloved university, but also to society in general. I think you'll be very impressed as we present these awards tonight. The recipients truly are gold standard gators. We are all elevated by their vision, their dedication, their hard work, and their generosity. So thank you all very much. And now I turn this back over to President Fox. The first award that we're giving tonight acknowledges exceptional compassion and selfishness in the pursuit of helping others. It honors those who tackle challenges with optimism, enthusiasm, and action setting an example for the next generation of philanthropists. Presenting the award is Dr. Rohan Milner, the Hills Professor of Oncology, College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Milner, would you please join us? See, they've got the prompts for me already. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
I must tell you all that I lecture every day just about to students, but I'm probably the most nervous this evening to lecturing to all of you. Anyway, in 2014, I had the pleasure of meeting two boys who were then 15 and 12 years old. I'm a veterinary oncologist, and their story was all too familiar to me. They, have, they had a dog, Liza Apsa, called Shasi, who had died of cancer. And in this field, unfortunately, you see your fair share of grief. What makes these young men so special, though, is what they did with that grief. In other words, they turned it around. They pushed past what happened to Shasi. They thought about other pets and families and channeled their sorrow into something that would make a positive difference in the wider world. And I'm so proud of our young people today that they think like this. They decided to raise money to fund pet cancer research. And when they looked around and couldn't find a nonprofit dedicated to this, they started their own, which is amazing. Their, com their organization is called Positively Curing Cancer and has since raised thousands of dollars for the College of Veterinary Medicine's oncology program, which I'm part of. A couple of years ago, the boys visited my lab at the vet school. They learned about cancer studies and, conduct, and how studying cancer in pets helps us in cancer, understanding cancer in humans. Indeed, their grandmother has battled cancer and lung cancer, and she's actually here with us this evening. There's an interconnectivity among living things, and when we advance research in one area, we can pull along a lot of others with us. One of these young men is now a freshman at UF, and I'm pleased to say he loves the Gators. The other is in high school with his sights on Gainesville. Not surprisingly, both parents are UF Gators alumni. They are, they are clearly raising their boys the right way. <laughs> Think of how much better the world would be if everyone started as young as these two in, the way, in moving things forward. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Josh, Bryce, Ben Bissett, and their parents, Steve and Dana. First off, I'd like to say I'm kind of upset that President Fox didn't give me a ride on my first day of school. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, we'd like to say thank you again. Bryce and I are extremely humbled to receive this award. This honor means so much more to me, considering I'm a freshman at the University of Florida, and my brother Bryce aspires to go there as well. Not to mention that both of my parents went to the University of Florida. When starting this nonprofit foundation, we had visions of making a difference in this world. Positively Curing Cancer was started when my brother and I witnessed the, witnessed the passing of our dog due to cancer. Alongside this, my grandmother was in a constant battle with breast cancer. Rather than watching from the sidelines, we decided to be proactive and do something ourselves. It was astonishing to see how many people's lives are impacted by cancer. We made it very specific to give the funds to raise to pet cancer research. And when choosing where the money was to be donated, we quickly, we quickly determined that the College of Veterinary Medicine at UF was a perfect fit due to their strong dedication to cancer research. The most intriguing part about our foundation is that the cure for pet cancer will likely lead to the cure for human cancer as well. In fact, just two weeks ago, my grandfather alerted me to a story that aired on NBC Nightly News about the cancer link in humans and dogs. The segment quoted that cancer is so common in dogs that doctors are studying them as a model for treating the disease in humans. It's very special knowing that our donations from positively curing cancer are going to research that could actually cure cancer in humans one day. Now that I have the proper networking in place at UF, we plan on growing this organization and becoming even bigger and will not stop raising money until we find a cure. This is the start of something great and the best is yet to come. Thank you once again. My brother and I are so honored to receive this prestigious award. Please visit cureforpets.org to find out more and go Gators. Well, that's incredible, what inspiring young men. Steve and Dina, you must be so incredibly proud. And I can't wait to see uh, the bright future that is indeed in stock for Josh and Bryce. 
I now have the great honor of presenting the next award. This one recognizes outstanding commitment to the University of Florida by an international graduate. Tonight's recipient is a risk taker, an entrepreneur, and a business leader with few peers. This individual came to the University of Florida from his native Japan on a Fulbright scholarship for graduate school in electrical engineering. He planned to return to Japan and move up the ladder at the National Telecommuni Telecommunications Company, NTT. But a funny thing happened in Gainesville. While earning his master's and his PhD at UF, he absorbed the entrepreneurial spirit that pervades our university. And he re realized that he wanted to take a different and a more risky path. He realized he wanted to create his own companies rather than work for those created by others. It took a little while for him to act on that dream. And indeed, after graduating from UF, this individual went back to Japan, took a job at NTT, but in 1984, he made his move. He founded a company to compete directly with NTT called KDDI. At that time, NTT had 350,000 employees. KDDI had two. More than 30 years later, KDDI is an eight, excuse me, an $80 billion company. And it's the number two telecommunications carrier in Japan. Meanwhile, this individual went on to launch other wireless carriers, wireless data services, internet, and mobile companies. And along the way, he transformed Japan's conservative telecommunications industry into an industry with dramatically lower prices and increased access. And indeed, his company became a global entrepreneurial legend. What's equally amazing about this individual is his leadership and service to others, particularly his alma mater. He is a prized UF ambassador and a generous benefactor who has given back to the university in many, many ways. He established the professorship that will lead to the Warren B. Nelms Institute for the Connected World. He also established a telepresence facility that will be the centerpiece for the Herbert Wertheim Laboratory for Engineering Excellence in that building. Undoubtedly, moved by his own life experience, this individual and his wife have recently established a foundation to provide educational opportunities for both Asian and U.S. graduating high school students to study at universities and colleges in Japan. The foundation offers underprivileged, academically qualified students full college tuition and living expenses. What an amazing opportunity for young talent in both Asia and the U.S. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to announce that our International Philanthropist Award and awardee is none other than Dr. Sachio Samoto. We talk a lot in our college about the new engineer. Technically excellent, but capable of leading and innovating in a world which is increasingly interdisciplinary and global. Sachio Samoto is an example of the new engineer. Once I really had gotten to know Sachio and Francis and felt like they trusted me, I, I had the courage to ask Sachio how he had the courage to go against Japanese business tradition and leave the National Telephone Company in Japan and start his own company. He said that he got the idea while he was here studying that did changed his mindset about business and how to do business in Japan. He had a vision and he was able to make that vision become a reality through a great deal of hard work and intelligence. Oh, I was totally untraditional, stupid, <laughs> and 99.9% uh, .9 of the people, they laughed and uh, they said, that you are not going to win. But I have uh, very strong confidence uh, from the day one. Sachio is one of the most entrepreneurial, visionary individuals I have ever met. He is incredibly smart, but he is also an incredibly intellectually curious individual. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's been able to stay at the forefront of technology for so long. Looking at innovations going forward, what's the hot new thing, what topics to move into. And he showed through his, his career uh, this ability to 
to know what the next big thing is and start moving to it before everybody else does. So it was natural for us to ask him a few years ago, what's going to be the next big thing? Where should we be focusing our attention? And Satya immediately said, Internet of Things, and encouraged us to begin to develop educational and research programs around that thematic area. To support this, he gave us the resources to create the Samoto professorship who would lead this initiative. Dr. Samoto is a role model, is a pioneer for every student in UF. But as an international student, I personally felt that the way he utilized his knowledge and uh, his qualities which he gained from UF after going back to his country teaches us how we can also help our nation in prospering in science and technology sectors. One of Satya's great characteristics is that his activities tend to bring people together and his gifts to our college are a perfect example of that. Bringing faculty from different disciplines together, bringing students from different cultures together and creating the kind of vibrant intellectual entrepreneurial environment that Satyo has created in his own companies. Thank you very much for your kind words of introduction. President Ken Fox, UF Foundation Board Chair Beth Maggie, and fellow Gators, it is my great honor to be inducted to the Academy of Golden Gators at the International Philanthropist this year. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of being recognized both big and small, but this one means more as my ties with the University of Florida is closest to my heart. The people I met, the excellent education I received in Gainesville, and the countless sleepless nights I spent pondering the meaning of life, <laughs> all shape and reshape my paradigm and form fundamental values I so hold dear. This is where my love of innovation, entrepreneurship, and working for the greater good all started. Winning the Fulbright Scholarship was the turning point of my life, as it, it gave me the opportunity to pursue a PhD program in electrical engineering here at the University of Florida. I arrived 50 years ago, 1967, two years before Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Some of you might be as young as I am and remember that television was still black and white in those days. In 1971, with a newly minted PhD in my hand, I went back to my motherland, Japan, still, still developing country. More than 50 years ago, my career started with NTT, Nippon Telegraph, Telephone Public Corporation. It's a Crown Corporation. Currently ranked number 65 on the Fortune Global 500 list. At that time, NTT was a pure monopoly, 100% owned by Japanese government, something similar to the former Bell system also known as the at and of yesteryears. My career was on the fast track in NTT, especially with a PhD I received from University of Florida. However, with the opportunity presented itself, I took the leap of faith 
and left my comfortable corporate career behind. I co-founded tiny, tiny, small startup called KDDI, just two of us. The very first private telecommunications startup in Japan, in just two of us. KDDI went public seven years later, and today it is rivaling NTT with its 100,000 employees with $80 billion company. After KDDI, I co-founded many more companies, including new internet company, broadband company, and uh, currently I'm the chairman of Renova, which is a renewable energy green company that just went public two weeks ago in Japan. My better half, Francis, somewhere, <laughs> is here with me today. She's the only person in the world who believed in me at every stage of my life. When I wanted to leave the comfortable gigantic NTT career behind, everybody laughed and called me crazy. But she supported my decision. She's my rock, my refuge, who keeps me grounded and well-dressed. <laughs> She's a wonderful mother and the grandmother of six. Please give a round of applause to my life partner, Francis. <laughs> Both Francis and feel extremely blessed. And we want to share with you, with others, we are so happy to be part of this university family and hope that many more young gators will go to change this world, challenge. Let me reiterate how thrilled I am to be inducted into the Academy of Golden Gators. Go greater, go gators. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sachio, for being a global ambassador for the University of Florida and for paving the way for the next generation of entrepreneurs. Our next award honors our lifetime volunteers. This award goes to those who have shown constant and deep commitment in making a difference at the University of Florida. Fittingly, the presenters are not only great Gators, but also Orlando philanthropists. Please welcome 2016 Academy of Golden Gators inductees, Jim and Alexis Pugh. I think he'd make a, uh, Tom would make a great Uber driver also. <laughs> well, go Gators, thank you. It's our great pleasure to present the Lifetime Volunteer Award to a couple where honored to know for many years in the Orlando area. This couple truly serves their community. They are patrons of science and the arts, both in Orlando and Gainesville. They both believe deeply in the human potential and the power of arts to lift spirits and heal souls. His support for the University of Florida is well known with generosity extending to athletics, the College of Arts, and most notably the University of Florida Institute for Food and Agricultural Sciences. His gifts support academic research programs at IFAS. He played a key role in helping 
recruit the new chair of the College of Architecture, excuse me, Agriculture, the Department of Entomology, the top, the very top ranked Department of Entomology in the whole nation. We've been impressed by her willingness to dive in and help UF as well. She has been instrumental in building a world-class arts and medicine program, one that serves as a model for programs internationally. Her deep belief in the power of creativity for everyone throughout their lifetime inspired the arts and medicine artist in residence, Dylan Klempner, to write a poem in their honor titled, By Law, I Can't Tell You Their Names which is based on the poet's daily experience with those suffering through the challenges of lifetime of illness. She is also a nationally known expert in the field of caregiving, fierce, funny, philanthropic, and a fabulous friend. Ladies and gentlemen, it's ple we are pleased to announce that the lifetime volunteers, Margie Papps, Steinmetz and Chuck Steinmetz. Would you please come up? Well, we're just thrilled and delighted. Um, to receive uh, this recognition and to join the wonderful group of people. I was noticing the list on the outside. I know a lot of those people. To be included with an august bunch of people like that is a real thrill for me. But I wanted to start out by telling you a true story. I was a terrible student. <laughs> I did graduate with a 2.0 average. My, wa <laughs> my, my wife was bragging about her brother, who's a PhD from Harvard, and she told me he never made a B. So I said, I never made a B either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm particularly happy that Jim and Alexis are up here because they are wonderful friends of ours. And uh, I've been um, so pleased to work with Jim for the last dozen years or so to build the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, and he is the chairman, so I do get to call him boss. <laughs> now, in addition to that, since I'm a graduate of the University of Florida, um, my late wife uh, also was a graduate of the University of Florida. My son, Matthew, is a graduate of the University of Florida, and my granddaughter is a sophomore at the University of Florida. So along with that, there's a, a bunch of aunts and uncles, and, and we're all very, very proud to be Gators. I wanted to read something that I got tonight that just really tickled me. This is addressed to uh, Margie and me, and she said, I am uh, Rowana Sarakawa, and I was funded on a Steinmetz uh, scholarship for four years of my PhD program. I want to congratulate you on being honored uh, with a lifetime volunteer at this year's Academy of Golden Gators. Your philanthropy greatly impacted my experience at the university. I am grateful for donors like you. Congratulations again and thank you for helping me to go greater. Now, it's, you know, 20, 20 years ago, uh, we started uh, this fund to uh, help graduate students in entomology do their research. And uh, uh, many of them have contacted me over the years, and some of the things that have been accomplished have had a profound effect on just not uh, the University of Florida or agriculture in Florida, but the world in general by uh, being able to perform things that nobody thought we could do before. So I'm very pleased and very thankful. Thank you. Lexus and Jim, sure appreciate you uh, helping us out here. Chuck and Margie, congratulations on, on your award. Our next award is the Annual Philanthropist Award of the Year, which provides outstanding service to the University of Florida over this past year. 
We have a very special person that's with us tonight that will present this award. Please give a very, very warm Gator welcome to our athletic director, Scott Strickland. Thank you, Tom. Chuck, I, don't ask me how I know this, but you're not the only co college graduate to stand up at this podium tonight with a 2.0 GPA. <laughs> it is my great pleasure and honor to present our next award, and I can't think of two more worthy recipients. This couple's interests span across our campus and beyond, and as you know, we have a pretty comprehensive campus. Among the areas they generously support, are the Building Construction Program at the College of Design, Construction, and Planning, the Warrington MBA Program, and the Whitney Laboratory for Marine Bio Bioscience in St. Augustine. Through their gifts to the Whitney, they are not only saving sea turtles, but they are maintaining our quality of life in North Florida. They are both Gator alums, as is their son, and they have a daughter who is currently a student at UF. When we talk to people who give to college sports, we associate their names with a field or a training complex or a stadium or a practice facility. And this couple has been incredibly generous in, in, uh, to Gator Athletics. They've done all those things I've just mentioned. But we could absolutely not have a first class athletic program at the University of Florida, one that produces a championship experience with integrity without the generosity of people like the ones we're about to recognize here. But what I want to talk about tonight isn't just gifts for facilities. I want to talk about the impact that people can have when they, their generosity can change the lives of young people. That change, change happens at a practical level. At the Hawkins Center at Farrier Hall, where students receive tutoring and support for academic and personal development, this couple supports that program. It is my privilege to honor a couple whose generosity has been a lifeline for thousands of student athletes and so many others. This year's annual philanthropists are Gary and Nancy Condren. The good news, Tom just said you can say a few words, aren't you? The good news is uh, Tom did not prompt me to be prepared for a speech, so <laughs> the good news is you're not going to get one. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that Nancy and I are very humbled by this award, and uh, as Shelby and Ryan are, we're very fortunate to be in a position to help a school and a program that we care about so much. We, uh, we're just very fortunate to be in this position and to make a difference in both, on both the academic and the athletic side of a great university is so humbling to me. It's, it's incredible to be up here in front of you. So, Nancy, come on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, short, we're short for words in the Condren family, so. Uh, go, Gators. go Gators! So before you go back to your seats, Gary and Nancy, I'd also like to make an exciting announcement. It's not often that we partner with a couple with such wide-ranging passions. We can't forget about those beloved sea turtles. <laughs> and indeed, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the Condren family has made a generous leadership gift of $5 million to benefit the Whitney Laboratory for Marine Bioscience. This gift is a culmination of the Condren family's tireless advocacy on behalf of the marine life and our coastal ecosystem. It's going to expand the Whitney's reach and also allow researchers to conduct more important work on behalf of our oceans and coasts. It will also impact marine conservation, training, education, and research far beyond Northeast Florida. We're thrilled to have the director of the Whitney Laboratory with us here tonight. 
please give a warm Gator welcome to Dr. Mark Martindale. Mark, will you please stand and be recognized? So you, you all, indeed, we, we do benefit when our oceans and coasts are healthy and thriving. Thank you, Condren family, for your vision, your generosity, and thank you on behalf of the athletes, the students, the scientists that you've helped through many years, all of whom would be diminished without your support. Thank you and congratulations. Our final award tonight acknowledges extraordinary commitment to the University of Florida and the foundation, honoring those who through their bold actions have shaped the university's philanthropic heritage. This year's recipient is one of those individuals, having achieved extraordinary success in business and strengthened the university through a unique combination of excellence, tradition, innovation, and leadership. This individual guides our university's path because he's the chair of the Board of Trustees. He provides crucial insight and advice as a member of the foundation, member of the Alumni Association, and the Warrington Business Advisory Council. He's the past president and legacy director for Gator Boosters, and he has served in numerous other leadership capacities on our behalf. He made possible the iconic facility that serves as an extraordinary home for students at the Warrington College of Business and that facility anchors our College of Business at University Avenue and 13th Street. He also made the lead gift in the stunning complex that serves as the, as the headquarters for the Gator football program. I'm greatly inspired by this individual, by his inner generosity and his leadership. Indeed, his insight and wisdom have been incredibly helpful to me and many others as I have worked to guide the University of Florida in my role. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lifetime Philanthropist Award goes to Bill Hebner. Bill? <laughs> Bill, as you're coming forward, we have put together something special that'll show a little bit about your generosity and how it's touched our awesome. campus. Bill, there's, so, there's someone else. There's someone else who would like to uh, make a few remarks. What's up, everybody? This is Tim Tebow. Uncle Bill, congratulations. You totally deserve this award. You've been a Gator your whole life. You bleed orange and blue. You love helping people, and you love the University of Florida. That's a pretty cool combination. No one deserves this more than you. Congratulations. We love you. God bless all of you guys, and go Gators. Let's go. That's really cool. <laughs> when uh, Tom called me about this award, I, I, I said, you really got to be kidding. And uh, I've learned over the years he doesn't kid about much. So uh, I said, yes. There's a, a little bit of a temptation, though, when you get a, an award like this to uh, think a little more highly of yourself than you should. And I read a Ben Franklin quote where he said, a man wrapped up in himself makes a very small bundle. And uh, it's been exciting to be a part of each one of these areas of our great university. 
but I thought it might be fun to share with you just how I got started in this journey. Uh, and it all started with me trying to buy football tickets. And I, I spent maybe 15 years trying to buy football tickets and never could find out how to get them. I even asked the chairman of what was the Board of Regents if he would help me to get football tickets, and he couldn't get football tickets. But I went to a Tennessee game in Tennessee in Knoxville with my partner, Ed Haddock, who's here, and his wife, Edie. And uh, as we were at our bus where we were tailgating, Yama Johnson, a, a great gator, came with two tickets, and nobody would go sit with him at the president's box in Tennessee because there wasn't another gator. And so I said, well, Yama, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. It'll be fine. And uh, we went, and we had to be quiet. We couldn't scream and yell because we were in the president of Tennessee's box. But on the way out, I said, Yama, I've been trying forever to get tickets. Could you get me tickets? And he said, oh, this is simple. He said, you send some money to the Gator Boosters, and they'll send you tickets. <laughs> and so when I got back to the office, I, I sent a runner with a check over to Yama's office. And Yama tells the story that the check was there before he got back from the game. And, and, I, and, I, and I got tickets, and it was just great. Uh, the next year, Yama was president of the Boosters, and he invited me to be one of his board members for that, that one-year session, which was just a, a blast. And, and during that year, I met Phil Farr. And it was the year that uh, uh, Urban Meyer was coming to the University of Florida. And so Phil was telling me about this new building that Urban wanted, or he might leave, and we really need to have this complex. And I couldn't figure out why he was talking to me about it. And <laughs> so, Finally, he said, well, we really need somebody to lead this gift. And, and, and I said, well, what does it take to do that? And, I, and I, I said, well, you know, I couldn't do that. And uh, Phil kept coming back with plans and this and that and the other. And he had more vision than I had. Uh, <laughs> and, and I really want to thank Phil for that because that set into place some of the most fun years of my life. We won two national championships in football. Uh, we won two national championships in basketball, and I got to be on the board of, of the Boosters that whole time watching this happen. So, Phil, thank you. Yeah. I think you're here. Right there. Where's Phil? Yeah. Phil Farr. Yeah. If, you, if you get a call from Phil, uh, <laughs> and he's got some pictures with him, uh, you're going to have a lot of fun. And, the next person that really has meant a lot to me uh, that kind of uh, over the years has not only been the dean of our business school, but a person who's just stuck with making things better and better is obviously Dean Kraft. And I think he might have sent Tom Mitchell to me. And uh, when Tom started talking to me, uh, our then president, Bernie Matchin, was going to put a building on one of the corners of the school. And so Tom started talking to me about the building. And I said, Tom, what, why are you bringing all these pictures? And uh, so, so sure enough, Tom said, well, you know, if we need the school to be improved, and we also need a building to put it in. And I said, well, what does it take to do that? And, I, and Tom told me, I said, Tom, you, let me get you an appointment with somebody who can help with that. And, <laughs> but Tom has got the same vision that Phil's got. And, and he may even be more persistent. And so through Tom's vision, uh, we did the School of Business together and, and the building there. And it's just been a real treasure. I got to be at a University of Florida basketball game in Alabama on Monday night where we won 52 or 72 to 52. And on the way back on the plane, it was a small compute, commuter plane for the basketball team, uh, one of our players that's been hurt for the year, Isaiah, was two seats behind me, and, and he said, uh, are you Mr. Heavener? And I said, yeah. And I turned around, shook his head, I said, what's your name? He said, I'm Isaiah. And he said, I'm in, I'm in the business school. And I, I said, how are you doing? And he said, I'm passing. <laughs> and I said, well, are you learning some things? And he said, yeah, it's a really great experience. And really brought home to me how important it is to, uh, to help the next generation be all that they can be. So. Uh, Tom, thank you for the opportunity oh, to be a part of that. Very well. If Tom calls you, either don't take the appointment <laughs> or you know you're going to do something really special. Uh, I've got a few quotes here that have really meant a lot to me. I read a quote by John D. Rockefeller that said, uh, think of giving it not as a duty but as a privilege. And it really is a privilege. Uh, it, has so enriched my life by being a part of these things that our great leaders here, including uh, Dr. Fox, have given us the opportunity to be a part of. And 
There's another quote by Winston Churchill that says that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. And uh, my favorite quote of all is from uh, a gentleman about 3,000 years ago that was the king of Israel at the time, Solomon. He said, uh, a generous man will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And that's really true. You know, the best times in my life have been when I've been helping somebody else other than myself. And these people at the University of Florida, our staff, our faculty, our president, are so committed to that. I've just never seen anyone more committed to helping others than, than our team at UF. Uh, my favorite quote of all was from Jesus of Nazareth. He says, it's more blessed to give than receive. And I think that's really true. So thank you. Bill, Christy, Giovanna, Chase, thanks so much for being with us. Very, very special evening. Congratulations to Gil, Bill on this wonderful award. Uh, Bill, I was talking to Scott Strickland earlier and he said he had some pictures. <laughs> I don't know, Scott, you, you got, you got, <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't introduce our first lady of athletics is with us tonight. Ann Strickland, Ann, could you please stand? <laughs> very good, very good. Thanks for being with us. Boy, what a special night. Isn't it great to be a Florida Gator? Oh, each and every one of these stories are so inspiring, and we hear these every day as we travel all over the country, and as we visit with alums. We were in San Francisco, we were in LA, we're here now, of course, in Orlando. We're gonna be in Sarasota next week sometime visiting with Gators. It is so comforting and so inspiring as we visit with alumni and friends on the aspirations they have for this university. And the bar is really high and getting higher every day. We cannot get there without the support, the help, the encouragement that each and every one of you give us every day. So we are truly, truly best to have Florida Gators by our side as we aspire to the next level of the top five. Please join me in one more round of applause for all of our award winners this evening. Enjoy the evening, go Gators!